Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use geometry nodes in combination with an add-on called the sapling tree generator that you may or may not have used before. But I feel like geometry nodes can breathe some new life into it. Let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is go into our edit menu and go to preferences. Under add-ons, we're going to enable the sapling tree generator. This add-on lets you generate trees really easily. We simply go to the Add Curve menu and choose Sapling Tree Generator. Using our Settings window, we can make all sorts of adjustments to the shape and branching of our tree. For this tutorial, we're going to choose Load Preset and choose Small Pine. Now you'll notice that this tree is 5 meters tall, which is way too tall for what we want to do here. So we're going to use the scale to shrink it down. Next, we'll adjust our branch distribution and number of rings. From the settings dropdown, we can go to branch splitting and add additional levels. Before we move on, the last thing we want to change is under the branch radius menu. We want to uncheck bevel. This will make it so that the add-on only generates curves and doesn't give it a bevel size, turning it into a mesh. Next, we'll add a geometry node tree. From here, we'll add a curve to mesh node and a curve circle profile. This basically gets us back to where we were before we turned off bevel, except now in the geometry node tree, we're gonna have a whole lot more control. Next, we're gonna wanna create our pine needle. This is going to be good enough for now. Next, we'll want to distribute some points on this tree that we can use to instance our pine needle. We'll use a point, distribute points on faces node. Of course, we still want to see our tree, so we'll add a geometry join geometry node and connect in our original tree again. We can bump up the density of points. Now on this line of points, we can add an instance on points node. We'll drag in our plane, which is our needle, and plug that geometry into the instance. You can see our needles have started to appear on our tree. We can continue to increase the density of our points. Of course, right now, all of the needles are pointing straight up. So we'll want to rotate them based on the direction of the faces of our branches. We can get that normal from the distribute points on faces normal output because that contains the normal where the point was instanced. We'll want to use that normal to affect the rotation. However, the normal is a vector and the rotation is an Euler. So we'll want to use a utilities align Euler to vector node. We'll plug the normal into our vector and the rotation into the rotation here. Since our needle is pointing up along the Z axis, that's the axis we're going to want to align to the normal. Let's give our needle some color. Now that's starting to look good, but we notice the main trunk of the tree has our needles coming out of it. So we'll want to prevent the instance on points from generating points on that branch. When the sapling tree generator generates curves, the main trunk will be curve zero. So if we go back to our original geometry and use a capture attribute node, set the domain to spline and use an input index node, we can capture the index of each spline. Then after we convert this to a mesh, the points of that mesh will retain that index as an additional anonymous attribute. So we can say when this attribute is not equal to zero, we want to generate the points. So now you see the primary trunk no longer has needles growing on it. Another thing we might not want is for there to be needles right at the base of each branch. Again, we could capture another attribute. This time, we'll capture the curve spline parameter factor. 
we could use this attribute in several different ways. We could say, when the attribute is greater than or less than a certain amount, to distribute points on those faces. We could also use it to determine the density of those points. Let's go ahead and do that. Now plugging this directly in makes it seem like all of our needles have gone away. That's because previously our density was set at 10,000 and now it's set from 0 to 1. So let's add in a utility math node, set it to multiply, and let's put this at say 10,000 again. Now, the further out each branch you go, the more needles are going to be generated. Finally, let's give our branches some brown color. We'll add a material, set material node, and choose the brown color we just created. Now if I simply tweak my needles a little bit, I can get the shapes that I'm looking for. There, that looks pretty good. Now if I were to run the sapling tree generator again, I would simply need to add a geometry node tree to it and choose my node tree. Of course, any of the settings that I had put on my node tree, I could drag out to the input so that I could have individual control over each tree generated. For instance, I could connect this density multiplier and have different density settings for each tree that I used this for. Anyhow, that's it for this tip. Give it a try and see what you can come up with. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.